G'day guys and gal, it's no secret I'm a huge Custodes fan. No, fan is putting it lightly. I'm a slut for the Custodes. I mean, I paid a bunch of money to get Custodian gear. Lost eight kilos to cosplay as a Custodes, and my left arm is a lot stronger than my right arm because of Custodes. I also just bought like a grand worth of Custody models that I'm just really keen to paint. So it has been a bit of a crime that I haven't uploaded much Custody content. Well, it's time to right this wrong. Whilst the classic rendition of the Custodian is a golden dude with a guardian spear, they're actually quite diverse. They have their own equivalents of Terminators, Heavy Weapon Specialists, Dreadnoughts, and all sorts of vehicles. I mean, it'd be a pretty shit army comp if all you had was dudes with spears, no matter how glorious those dudes may be. Before we get started, by this point, you already know about Manscaped. The innovative Lawnmower 4.0 that can give you a crispy clean shave without dicing up your nuts like sashimi. Then there's the Ball Reviver and Ball Deodorant that cuts through stanky dick, making it a thing of the past. But the unsung hero of the Perfect Package 4 is... The Undies. This shit makes you feel like the Greek gods themselves are cradling your family jewels. Great for sleeping in... Making shit YouTube videos in... Or even ripping a fat workout in. Moral of the story, it's a good pair of man panties. So if you want to get the lawnmower, nice ball smelling stuff, a nifty toiletries bag, and the best undies you'll ever wear, then use my link in code MAJORKILL below for 20% off and free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over each of the various different types of custodies, diving into what role they play and how powerful they are, and other fun stuff like that. Let's get into it. Custodes are grouped into various chambers based on their specializations, which are broken down further into exact unit types. For example, there are two common Custodes jet bike patterns, that being Agamantis and Virtuous Praetor. Man, this video is really going to test my Latin. They are both a part of the Katofroki chamber, so to save some confusion, we will disregard the chamber system for this video and just instead focus on individual unit types. Make sense? Good. The first Custody unit type on this list is the Basic Banana Boys, the Custodian Guard. Don't mistake me calling them basic as an insult. This chick looks pretty basic, but I would slam her until my dick ruptured, causing myself fatal levels of hemorrhaging. Worth it. The bread, butter, and backbone of the 10,000, each Custodian Guard is a Dark Souls boss in his own right, training nearly every day for any situation. These 9 foot tall warriors sport custom made armor as well as Guardian Spears. Guardian Spears are a bit of a cheeky 2-in-1. They are legendary melee weapons that can cut through nearly anything with ease, and they also have an inbuilt bolt gun. That means that if we ever see an animation, or praise the Emperor, a live action fight scene with the Custodes, there is a good chance we will get to witness one of the Emperor's finest impale a heretic on his spear, and then blow the heretic in two with a bolt gun blast. After at least five centuries of service, Custodian Guards will have the opportunity to ascend to become Custodian Wardens, which are more or less the same, except they get a bit more roby and can swap out their spear for a Castellian Axe. For context, if the current Captain General of the Custodes, which is their highest rank, was to be categorized in this list, he would be a Custodian Warden. Another variant of the standard Custodian Guard is the Sentinel Guard, who trade their Guardian Spears for special shields and Sentinel Blades. This next selection of perfect specimens aren't really their own unit type, but they deserve a mention nonetheless. The Companions, also known as the Hetrion Guard, for anyone who wants to brush up on a dead language. Whilst the Companions look like and are geared up like normal Custodian Guard, their role in the 10,000 is extremely distinguished. They are the personal bodyguard and confidants of the Emperor himself. Like sure, all 10,000 Custodes are technically his bodyguards, but these are the dudes that suck his toes and polish his bones. Their job was a lot more fun 10,000 years ago when the Emperor could actually chat to them. In saying that though, the Emperor occasionally pops into their dreams to say g'day and to subtly push them towards a goal or an objective. One companion even got kinda upset because the Emperor hadn't popped into his dreams for a little while. Whilst the companions are extremely powerful, even by custody standard, they aren't the best of the best. The Emperor deliberately avoids recruiting the best Custodes into the Companions, as that means they are stuck by his side, instead of venturing out into the galaxy and kicking some heretic's teeth in. This is what happened with Valerion. He tried to do the test to become a Companion, and the Emperor full psychically kicked him in the balls and caused him to fail. The next cluster of blessed boys on this list is Vetrilux Praetors. 
who are the standard bearers of the Custodes. Their armor is not what is important, like they could be wearing Terminator armor or standard Custody armor. What is important about them is the big ass golden banner they wield. Now unlike space marines who hold up their banners to flex on their enemies, a custody banner is extremely technologically complicated, taking around a century to create. It's worth it though, as the banner emits a semi-psychic wave that boosts the morale and combat ability of all units near it, whilst demoralizing and even sometimes blinding enemies. It can also be used as a homing beacon for when custodies want to teleport into battle, and it can project a bit of a cheeky force field. Moral of the story, fucking handy to have. Such a valued and rare tool is only entrusted to a select few custodies, hence the unit type of the Vexillus Praetors. I've mentioned it a few times, but yes, custodies do have their own variants of Terminator armor that is better in every way. Whilst normal Space Marine Terminator armor turns you into a slow moving tank, unless your name is Logan Grimnar, Alaris Terminator armor barely hinders a custodies movement, whilst giving him a fuckload of protections as well as heavier firepower. The armor is so in tune with its wearer that its functions and weaponry activate according to the wearer's thoughts. Like they don't have to flex or press buttons and shit, they just need to think, it's raping time. And bada bing bada bong, their Bastilus grenade launchers just racked up a pentakill. Alaros Terminator armor is considered the best armor in the Imperium. You know how I say that Custodes shit on space marines in every way, shape and form? Well here's another example. They get another pattern of Terminator armor, the Aquilon armor. Hence this next entry is the Aquilon Terminator Sodalades. Whilst the Aquilon armor is slower and bulky than the Alarius, it packs more of a punch and is designed more for direct front on combat. In saying that though, compared to a Space Marine Terminator, the Aquilon is still quite fast. Armed with hectic weapons such as Athratic Destructors, which are more or less the same as Necron Ghost Blasters, these rare variants of Custodes will tear your asshole wide open and go in dry. Now you might be thinking, Custodes are fucking sick. No shit, but how are they able to handle enemies like the Tower of the Elder, who have a lot of long range weaponry? And it's a valid point, except it fucking isn't. A, because Custodes don't really fight Tower and Elder, B, they can just charge the fuckers, and C, the Sagratarium Guard are a thing. These Custodes swap some of their frills and their spears for longer ranged higher firepower Adarathica weapons. As I touched on earlier, these weapons tear apart the atomic structure of anything they hit, so yeah, don't get hit. Beyond that though, this custody type is quite rare. An even rarer and honestly quite odd custody unit is the Venetari. These guys are basically just custodies with wings. Yeah, I think GW is just trying to make a custody version of Space Marine jetpacks and this is the result. I ain't hating though. Imagine going up against the custody force. You're thinking about the best strategy then BAM! Golden pigeons of death come out of nowhere and absolutely shit on your tits. That's the Venetari, lady and gentlemen. Now we have the first custody vehicle unit, the Virtus Praetors. Only veteran custodies can fulfill this role, as the Virtus are tasked with perving on the enemy to try and figure out what they're trying to do. Their obscene skill level means they're able to rapidly maneuver around a battlefield, taking out priority targets with sniper precision or full on impalement with their Inceptor Lance. For context on why this is impressive, the crack shots that they land are fired when they're going so fast that they appear as a blur. I can't even piss in a fucking toilet bowl half the time, let alone doing it flying around on a hover bike at 500 k's an hour. Another variant of the jet bike the Custodes have is the Agamatus jet bike. Whilst the Virtus Praetors would act as scouts and elite solo units, the Agamatus jet bikes almost always fight in a squadron, and they act like heavy cavalry. They could flank around an enemy force and then just mow them down. What happens to a Custodes when they get severely injured in battle? Do they get disposed of? No. Their knowledge and skills are still legend. Do they retire? No, that's a waste. Do they get thrown in a fucking mecha? Hell yeah. Only in death does duty end. Hence the Custodes have the Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. Unlike normal Dreddies, the Achilles is incredibly mobile with most of their joints movable. This creates a hell of a sight, especially in melee combat, as these Dreddies can sprint into battle and perform flips. I haven't actually read about them performing flips, but if any Dreddy could do it, it would be the Achilles for sure. The Custodes go even harder with their Dreadnoughts though. They have the Telemon Heavy Dreadnought that genuinely looks like a fucking raid boss. Whilst nearly any heavily injured Custodi would be put into an Achilles, only the most legendary and revered Custodes would be put into a Telemon. Like there's not many things in the galaxy that could 1v1 a Primark, and I'm not saying a Telemon would do it, but it'd give it a red hot fucking crack. Everyone loves tanks, including the Custodes. 
so it's no surprise that they have their own, the Pala Grav Tank. Like all custodian shit, this is incredibly mobile, flying around the battlefield and vaporizing bitches wherever it goes. It's like a pocket rocket, not particularly big or armored, yet it deals out crazy amounts of punishment. Another variant of Custody Tank was the Coronas Grav Carrier, which acted as a troop transport, but if the need arises, could deal out a severe amount of destruction. Whilst the Caladius is the heavily armed and armored tank of the Custodes, having twin linked bolt cannons and a taste for Danas. The final notable Custody type is a bit of an interesting one, which I hope we see more of the eyes of the Emperor. A Custody never truly retires, but eventually, due to their wounds, they will slow down. By slow down, I mean their reaction time will go from 1 nanosecond to 1.1 nanoseconds, which is negligible, but for a Custodes, who are always seeking self-improvement and perfection, this is a huge L. They will deem themselves no longer worthy to actively protect the Emperor or to wear their sacred armor. Hence, they will remove all their gear and venture out into the Imperium, becoming a super spy. It's a pretty funny mental image, imagining a nine foot tall demigod trying to blend in and be a spy, but regardless, they're actually quite good at it, setting up entire spy networks to identify threats before devious leaks can be performed. This is why custodies seem to know how to deep strike onto enemy's tits at the most random of times. Their intel is obviously limited if they stay by the Emperor's side in full golden armor, but with the eyes of the Emperor out there gathering intel, they can be more informed than even the most diligent of Inquisitors. Occasionally, Eyes of the Emperor will return to Terra and request to be put into a Dreadnought, as, let's be real, bisecting bitches with a fuck off huge energy glaive is probably a lot more fun than being a 9 foot tall James Bond. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of hentai, including some golden banana girl stuff. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more custody sucking content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.